Hey everyone, printables.com from Prusa frequently has 3D modeling contests. One of the current ones is Make It Fly. I checked it out and decided to print a few to test them out. All right, here's the contest page for Make It Fly. As of right now, it's ending in just two days on March 31st. And since February 13th, there have been 452 entries. And there are a lot of really cool entries. I wish I could have printed a lot more of these, but Let's uh, check out the ones I did get. This is the Airbus A380 slingshot glider uploaded by Die Hard. With this one, you print the plane, a little hook, and a stick for the rubber band, and then use just the single rubber band to launch it. Now, the nozzle on this one was a little too close to the print bed, leaving some gaps around the perimeter, so I just reprinted it. All right, this one looks much better. All right, here it is with the hook attached. Here we go. All right, I also made uh, another one in PETG. Whoa. This one slammed into the door so hard that it shattered the wing. And look at this giant hole it left in the door. Huh, <laughs> just kidding, that's a whole separate accident. This is the rubber band glider launcher uploaded by Owl Art. Here are the parts that need to be printed for the gun, and over here is the plane. This was printed on a CR-10 in a very cold garage. The small wingtips that are pointed upwards could have been printed a lot better. Well, here it is, printed and put together with the rubber band. It's set up a little different from the original design. Looping the rubber band under. The original had the rubber band cut and tied around both sides. And here I was having trouble with the trigger not releasing the rubber band. And the rubber band was getting caught between the plane and the rail. I did get it to launch a few times and even tried this little trick with a paper clip. That seemed to work okay and then I realized I'm an idiot and put the rubber band in the wrong place. I had the rubber band set to release from the trigger and grab the plane on its way up. But the rubber band actually goes in the notch of the plane and the plane itself gets hooked to the trigger release. This is the gyro ring glider and launcher by Lobo CNC. Along with the printed pieces, this one requires a six millimeter dowel about 600 millimeters long. Here's the ring for the front end of the tube that gets launched. And these really thin flexible prints will wrap around it. These were printed with just two layers at 0.2 millimeter thick each. And this is PETG, so it's really flexible. Lucky for me, I had a steel rod laying around in the garage that's almost exactly like the dowel that Lobo CNC designed this for. And with this long rail and four rubber bands, this thing has a lot of power. During the printing process, the blue PETG I used didn't bridge very well at the top, so the trigger wasn't latching on very well. And did I mention this thing had a lot of power? The rubber band that's wrapped around the steel rod is meant to soften the impact. I should have added an extra rubber band. I definitely underestimated the force this thing creates. But alright, let's go through some really quick and easy prints real quick. This is the paper plane by Shiko. The design was inspired by real paper airplanes, so I decided to use Polyterra White on this, which has a papery feel to it. Unlike most PLAs that are really smooth, this texture is not going to help it fly or anything, but it feels really cool. And does it fly like a real paper airplane? No, not at all. Another one from Owl Art, a fully printable parachute for toy soldiers. Now I printed all of this in PETG. Hopefully it can make falls less lethal for toy soldiers. Now let's go ahead and get this guy in there. And he's gonna need a seat belt cause we're getting the help of a four year old on this one. Ah! All right, three, two, one, drop. Go. Go.
this hovercraft was uploaded by Ultimate, which was redesigned to have a removable stack for the balloon after I already printed this one. Because it's a little tricky to get the balloon on, but I would put a clip on it so the air doesn't rush out while I'm trying to get it on. It actually glides along pretty well, if I could just get the balloon to stay vertical. And this is what the air channels look like underneath. This is the original twist copter uploaded by Charlie LJ18, with a stick for twisting and a fan for flying, though this one won't fly at all. I was trying to make this thing light as possible, but this thing has a very steep overhang, so I made the extrusion wider and printed really slow. It was working decent, but I was spinning it so hard that it ripped off the little notch there that turns the propellers. I should have turned up the heat a little bit to make the layer adhesion better. But that is a tiny piece that'll break off really easy, but I did have a backup on me. So let's try this one. Not bad. Now I'll try this one that I printed in PETG. But that same piece broke off this one too. And I never got to try out the propeller that I printed in Polyterra. I guess I won't have to bother sanding it. This is the Whirly Bird, another one from Lobo CNC. Now this was printed with one parameter and just a tiny bit of infill to make it really light. I should have turned the flow up a little bit because the blades have little gaps between them. Here's another one being printed in PLA. Well, one of the blades broke off on this already, but let's try it anyways. Blah. All right, here we go with the PLA Whirly Bird. Well, I guess one parameter wasn't enough for the stick. Here is the Finger Flinger by D. Eichenbaum. Don't mind my pronunciation. But this uses a 3D printed spring to create tension. These things can get quite powerful, like on this catapult that completely demolished the impact rail. Let's try launching this ball from a Nerf gun. A little foam block. It does like to fling straight upwards sometimes. Alright, here's a gumball. This is the propeller launch base by Wim V. And for this one, you need to print a bunch of different parts to make a case around a giant spring, just like in that finger flinger. Now, this is a pretty big spring with enough added parameters to make the spring itself solid. Now I noticed something kind of funny when I was printing it. With the combing feature turned on, the nozzle will stay within the infill when traveling. So it would spin around the whole length of the spring to get to a different area. To fix this, I turned combing off and turned on Z-hop when retracted, which will raise the nozzle a little bit so that it doesn't hit any printed parts when it's traveling. And that shaved off about two hours from the print time. Uh, it's not quite as stiff as I expected from PLA, but I'll have to try it again in a different color. Or maybe with carbon fiber additives. But this should still be pretty powerful. And as suggested by WIMV, I covered the gears and the spring with Vaseline to fight against friction. And it may not look like it, but the parts are really smooth. Alright, now I just gotta crank this thing up. This toroidal fan did all right. It hops up a little bit. Right, the three go. loop toroidal fan didn't take off. Must be a little too heavy because of the thick walls. I'll have to try printing it with some different uh, settings. Take off. <laughs> Two, one, go. Whoa! Whoa, it hit the ceiling! So the smallest one did the best at only three grams. This one weighed five grams. The fan that didn't manage to take off was 9 grams, though I'm pretty sure I could make the spring stronger after testing which of the PLAs that I have is the stiffest. This is the giant lawn dart from Triple G Workshop. Along with the end cap, it comes with three different nose caps. There's the normal pointed one, and an extra long one, and a round one so that it's a little safer. Now this is the model I was most excited about at first, though my CR10 must need a tune-up because the size didn't quite fit. I'd use a rubber mallet just to pound on the nose tip to get that far. 
It's recommended to use 100% infill on the nose cap to put as much weight towards the front end as possible. I printed this long one hollow so that maybe I could fill it with concrete, but that's probably a terrible idea. And between all the rainstorms and snowstorms we've had over the last month, I haven't got to try anything outside yet, but I'm really hoping to do so in the near future. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. My favorite was this propeller launch base. But as of now, with only one day left on the contest, there are so many cool models I'd really like to try printing. But I hope you all found this video interesting, and thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite, or if you've printed any of your own from the Make It Fly contest. And subscribe to 3D Vibes so you don't miss future videos. I'll see you all in the next video.